We have a need to communicate with one another. We've forgotten how to shake hands. We don't know how to hug. We just text one another. We don't even call each other. We don't visit in person. We use Discord or something else. And we think that that's fine. So we're, in a sense, afraid of one another. Maybe we're afraid of ourselves. All right, my name is Thomas Galliotto, and I'm a plant and soil scientist. We're here to do a short documentary about things that I know, things that I'd like to convey to the general public. We're in um, Manoa Valley, about midway in the valley, so we have a pretty good uh, rainfall here. And this particular property was purchased about 80 years ago, and the gentleman purchased two lots. So this property or this uh, um, lot is twice as large as most of the other ones adjacent to it. So there are many fruit trees here that were planted. So when I came about 12 years ago, I was introduced to the fruit trees and it's really wonderful. Like behind you is a star fruit and to my right is a, a Hayden mango and then there's a lychee beyond and to, to in the back of me there's a um, an egg fruit tree. So we have some soil here that is somewhat difficult to work with. It's a type of clay. And anytime you have a clay soil, you have to treat it a little carefully. Clay soils are fertile, but they're also difficult to cultivate and to grow plants in, especially if you're not aware of when to install or plant things or how to treat the soil. One of the things that I'm doing to enable the growth of all of those much smaller plants, because a tree is a plant, it's just a very large plant, is to add organic matter. And I've been collecting organic matter from the leaves, so the leaves do not go out in the green waste bins. And I'm collecting everything I can from my neighbors. And the things that do go out are big, big sticks and branches, a good size one came down last night and went out in, in the green waste today. And that feeds the microorganisms that are in the soil. And then you can grow even prettier plants, more delicate things. You can have a prettier garden and gardening becomes much, much easier. So the more organic matter, the more delicate your plants. Around here, they don't have a place like this. They don't have such plants in the ground. I feel that's because they don't understand that they need to prepare the soil. Humans have the ability to make soil. There's five soil forming factors of Hans Jenny. Let's see if I can remember all of them. So the first one would be um, what's called parent material. And usually that's some type of rock or something that's just starting to break down through chemical and physical we weathering. But we can just start with a regular soil. We can call that parent material. Next one would be organic matter, and that includes microorganisms' bodies, that's organic matter, and whatever is, is falling on that soil or added to it by human beings. So if you bring chicken manure to your soil or mulch, you're, you're adding organic matter. The next one would be irrigation, some type of uh, precipitation that's falling or, or putting some kind of water on there or snowfall. That actually changes the soil the amount so you can think of a desert soil versus some valley soil the next one would be aspect how is it facing the sun is it getting a lot of sun because of its aspect and then the last one would be slope so i mentioned that you know it's nice if things are level well the slope could be steep it could be not so steep and then it might have an aspect where it's facing away from the sun. That would be kind of bad where, you, where you're where you you know living if you wanted to grow food, which in general requires a lot of light. So we rate soils from one through 10. Number 10 are on steep slopes. You don't want to grow any food on those slopes. The number one soils or the best soils, we decided to give them a one. And for instance, on this island, the very best soils in fact, in all of Hawaii, have a farm on them right now. This is the Alun farm. That area of land on this island out there towards Kapolei, 
was called the Golden Triangle. That is the best soil. It's flat. That should not be used for building houses. That should not be used for building a small university campus. The rail line actually goes through this soil. That's our security to feed these islands. And so we need to protect those soils. This atmosphere used to be very, very high in carbon dioxide. And plants had removed that down to about 0.35%, uh, which had been, if I'm not mistaken, something like maybe 60%, maybe even higher, or maybe lower. Plate tectonics kicked in, and the Earth is moving these plates under one another. Carbon dioxide gets sequestered deep in the Earth. Humans have... Uh, release this material right. to run industry, to make products, to satisfy what seem to be needs of human beings. So the natural earth cycle, if we go back a couple hundred years ago, it's in a balance. Human beings have added a component to that. And you think, well, that wouldn't matter, but it does matter. That's the whole problem. So things are actually going to heat up and continue to heat up. We need to act, and everybody can contribute to that by making choices in the marketplace, by reducing uh, their transportation needs. So people absolutely have a relationship with plants. They, they like wood furniture you know, or wood paneling that used to be very popular at one time. And I see it now in some new renovation at the Manoa marketplace. Suddenly that place is being covered in what looks like wood. They're actually paneling the exterior of Manoa Marketplace. I was taught during my last thesis by uh, Kumu Hula John Lake. And John Lake, who has now passed on, taught me that plants are amakua of ancestors. You can think of a coconut tree, this tree behind me. This is a representation of the god Ku. And so when I cut a plant, I like to ask the plant, you know, can I take this flower? Can I take, basically a flower is a sexual organ of a plant. And I make arrangements and I bring them to people. So it's great to have uh, plants and to appreciate them and to thank the plants. We think that things aren't conscious, but they are. Everything is alive. Everything is a living. I love people, and I know that people can be very compassionate. All we really want is safety. We want human companionship. And that's why we do all this crazy activity that is damaging the planet, is that we're scurrying around so that we're attractive, so that we have money, so that we can bring people to us. And those things can be there at, at a relatively low cost to the overall environment. I've learned that a human being has a capacity for pleasure. And when that capacity is filled, a person can't get any more pleasure. They have to wait a while. When people see you doing things, and you get pleasure from doing things for others, they elevate you in society, and you build the social bond. We have a need to communicate with one another. We've forgotten how to shake hands. We don't know how to hug. We just text one another. We don't even call each other. We don't visit in person. We use Discord or something else. And we think that that's fine. So we're, in a sense, afraid of one another. Maybe we're afraid of ourselves. We need people to be compassionate and empathetic towards others. We have many events going on right now that are disastrous. We started this, we can stop it. We're clever. I'm very optimistic. Yeah.